God, I'm doing this according to your will, and I am um, grateful to be able to do this book review. I'm excited, right? The book is written by my pastor uh -huh. of Eden Life and Love Ministries, Pastor Valerie Mushingam, who is currently in Benin with our mama, Esther, planting a new church. I mean, the Great Commission, right? Go ye the ends of the earth and i'm just so honored that i am spending some time in the church in their absence and i am like in in the presence of god and so much has been going on and i'm just so um grateful that i am also able to do this book review during this period um yeah so i want to just commend this to you father god it's all for your glory and i am just so 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 humbled to be doing this review and uh, i really hope that someone is going to watch and is going to be so richly blessed to go back and um study you know the gospel um uh, and not just listening to what all kinds of winds and doctrines that are out there nowadays being propagated as the gospel um Holy Spirit, come and help your girl. Yes, sweet Holy Spirit. Come and help me. Breathe out my mouth and um, open it when you have to open it. Just put the right words in there. It's all about you, Jesus. You are the center of it all. So increase while I decrease. Just take all the glory. You are highly honored. You are just so wonderful. Bless us all. Especially my pastor and mama as they continue to do this wonderful work they're doing in this 
village in Benin and inspire us all just so much. Thank you so much, Father, for everything. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. My special tribe. Wow. This is... <laughs> Oh my God. I read this book in um, 2019, the same year it was written, you know, so the Lord said, you're going to read it again. And then when I finished reading it, he said, eh, big mommy, you do review now. I was first like, Papa, I did a review in 2019, although it was in French and they put it on the church's website, Facebook page. Where well, Papa, you never answer me. So oh, yeah, me, I just <laughs> behave myself and wrote what i had to write and sat down today i had to do it yesterday but i i just came back yesterday and i was tired and i was just like okay well you're going to do it this morning before you walk out right yes papa okay so um this is it and uh you know the intention of a review of a book review is not to give you everything that is in the book it's to ginger you so you can go and get the book and read you know uh, let me just tell you before i go into the review it's not a very big book. It's not a big book. I mean, you can finish this book not in one day because you're not just reading, you're studying. But it's not going to take you so long. Yet, it's very profound and it's going to make you, um, you know, look at yourself in the mirror, check the things that you have been. You know, the renewing of the mind that is talked about in the in the gospel in, um, I think it's Romans chapter 2. No, no. Let me not say something that's not correct. But I do remember it's two, verse two, something. Anyway, so that renewal of the mind also comes from reading books like this. And you know, um, I'm currently reading, not reading, studying this book written by Mama Esther on um, your identity in Christ. You know, I am, um, I have, I can. And I'm taking one per day, one, one something per day. And um, I'm so happy that she wrote that book because like she went into the bible and collected just major ones and put in one book so i don't have to go to the bible every i read the bible every day that's let me not lie i do and i love it yet i might not be able to pick them out that way every day but now given that there's this book i have it in one place and i am now also putting it on cards and i've put them on my mirror or something there Every day I read, I remind myself of that. And that is what this book is also doing. You know, the gospel reminder. In short, the author says it clearly in his subtitle so that a large number of people do not go to hell. Because a lot of people, or I mean some who have been so privileged to have this, uh, um, gone to heaven and, you know, have this vision and all of this. They say that when they go, the Lord shows them so many people in hell, including men of God and all of that. And they're like, hey, who will make heaven in the end? Well, those who believe in the Lord Jesus and not only believe, confess him in their mouth and live according to his precepts. That's what he said. If you don't keep my command, how would you know all of these things if the gospel that you now know is some kind of watered down gospel? It's not even, you know, for example, something called prosperity gospel. I've read my Bible over and over. I never saw a section where Jesus sat down and was talking about prosperity. I did not even see even in the in the sermon on the mouth, blessed are they, blessed are those who have many cars, blessed are those who have many hearts, blessed. But it is now like, oh, 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 it is all about. In short, Jesus came to be our ATM. He came to be our, but that is not the real gospel. That is why this book is so important. I really loved it and I still love it. I look, look <laughs> oh, the way I am not reading, I'm studying actually. You know, red pen all over the place, underlining and all of those things. And then, well, I think I'm going to do another study. I'm not sure that I studied enough this time around. I need to do better notes in my ledger um, so that I also do not become a castaway. You know, sometimes it's easy to, you know, talk, talk, talk. Talk is cheap. It is putting into practice. That is where we will now know whether it's not just about that preaching, but it's about the practice. That is why even preachers have to be very careful. Because after you have finished preaching, 
what are you practicing and secondly what are you even preaching because you know you can you can deceive people by what you preach and that's not good not many preachers are writing books talking about hell hell what second coming of jesus what is it in that same bible did jesus himself talk about hell Somebody was trying to rebuke me the other day by telling someone or by saying, thinking that someone is very carnal. Yeah, the person said I was very spiritual, thinking I was going to be kind of an insult to me. No, it was a badge of honor for me. So yes, that means that if they even find me very spiritual, it means that on the other side, they are carnal. Why not? Look, Jesus did not mix his words when he said, repent for the kingdom of God is near at hand. He did not mix his words when he was calling people Pharisees, hypocrites, you vipers. No. That's the gospel. This watered down thing that we want to be politically correct. We don't want to step on anyone's toes. Let me just read something here. Um, First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1, which is a passage that the author also quotes, right? It's scripture. Now, brothers and sisters, this is the new international version. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taking your stand hopefully they are still on that stand they have not become like the galatians whom the apostle paul found to have been bewitched that was a church he established and shortly thereafter uh, when he thought he should go and visit them to find out what has become of them he was like hey this is night and day what you know and those are some of the things that the author looks at here yeah, he, he talks about um you know why 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 should we remind people of this gospel why why should we remind people he says that um people forget precious things that they are not reminded of and which is true you know even in school you know they have repetition uh, you until you just start cramming and you remember to the point where they may wake you up from sleep you remember you say la 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 because the teacher will come write it on the board read it in your textbook go front come back so that it should stick if you just look at it once yeah the bible has 66 books i've read the bible from cover to cover three times uh -huh. so what did you retain what did you get i do bible studies with my my sister one of my sisters my darling sister online and every day she does a chapter a day we are now in daniel we did chapter three yesterday today will be daniel chapter four and then i have another um sister also who uh, does a prayer hour on mondays and wednesdays and she uses the scripture you know i i have used some of those scriptures myself like especially last year the year before when i was doing uh online ministration all of those things and and i still study right now in church we are also doing um the, a bible a year so we are reading like two three chapters per day depending on how the pastor puts it there what the program is following i, I don't know i'm just following it and I, I i do my own study too and all of that and sometimes you go back and forth back and forth back and forth that's the only way it is going to stick i am not going to forget it because we are bombarded in the world with all kinds of things i i mean i read the comment <laughs> recently uh, some people were saying the marriage of Moses Blitz to his wife was boring because they played only gospel music. Can you imagine? That is how carnal the world is. Are those people Christians or they are worldly people? Why should they go and be playing worldly music in their in their marriage or their videos? And then it's their choice. And then if they decide to honor God that much, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, even talking about gospel music, there's gospel music and there's gospel music, whatever be the case, they decided not to play worldly music, you know, the likes of whoever, how do you call them? I you know, you start calling the post name, they'll come after you. Yeah. So I don't even want to remember their name. So I don't even I don't listen to it. So I don't even remember those people. But you know, some of those people like that. You can you can know their names. I don't want to because if you even listen to those things, and you know things of the world have a way of sticking. You are just walking on the street. By the time you even just capture a little of that sound, that's the thing that will be in your mind and the whole day will not want to go. So to remind myself of these precious things. I am constantly listening to them. If, even when I'm not in the room, I put it on play, scripture, you know, stuff like that. When I'm walking on the streets, I have my earpiece on. I'm listening to what I don't want to forget. And I don't want anybody to come and fool me with a different message. 
Because another reason why the author says that we need to be reminded of the gospel, of the true gospel, is because the church has been bewitched. And last week I was reviewing this book, The Unbewitching of the Church, by Apostle Pierre uh, Mianko, who is actually his spiritual father, you know. And uh, he actually prefaced this book. Yeah, he prefaced this book. And if you... <laughs> Uh, you have listened to Apostle Pierre, you know that he's a no-nonsense man. So I don't doubt it that my pastor is submitted to the Apostle because my pastor is also a no-nonsense man. For example, he's starting a seminar today, three-day seminar in Benin today on... um, What's that seminar? On, uh, <laughs> oh, making disciples of Jesus and not people who fill the church. What kind of audacity is that? That you plant a church and you don't want to fill it up. You want disciples, you know. You don't want to just uh, fill the place up. This is only someone who is really interested in the things of God and not in pleasing man. Yes. La priorité fait de disciple de Christ et pas de fidèle d'église. Don't just want people to say, I belong to this church. I belong to Eden Life and Love. No, 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 no. Are you a disciple of Christ? Because, well, that is what Eden Life and Love is about, raising disciples for Christ. So it is like, yes, let me better raise you as a disciple. Two, three years. I know that you are a solid disciple or you are on the way. Than to just say, oh, you just come to church day in, day out. I'm a faithful. I'm a faithful. You know, we used to, growing up when I was still on the other side, we had church cards. So to show that you're a Christian, you have to have your card. And your card has to be ticked each month when you go and pay your church membership. Goodness gracious. The last reason I'm going to talk about, because I don't want to give away the book, is that there's need to review the condition of those who have received the gospel, um, the good news, and um, let it not be that they have believed in vain. You know, the Apostle Paul at some point, I read it today in Acts chapter 15, yeah, he was telling Barnabas that it was time for them to go and revisit the churches that they had planted to see where those people are at. And that is where his disillusionment started because when, when, when he went back, some of them had even backslidden to the point where it was like, huh? And uh, thinking about it, several years later, in some of those countries even, it's like, what did you even go to do there in the first place? So sad. Anyway, so um, it is very important for us to uh, be reminded of the gospel and not be... Yeah, and swayed by every wind of doctrine and all of those kind of things. Good morning, darling. Uh, not be swayed by any wind of doctrine. You know, people who just want to. Uh, Jesus is like a. I don't know. These jockeys. An ATM, automatic teller machine. You just go. He, that's what he came to do, right? He did not call. He did not come to call sinners to him. He did not come to show us the way. He's not the way, the truth, and the light. Nah. You know. And sure. There's one pastor who is so mad on YouTube saying that what is gay Christian? What is gay Christian? Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed for the same thing the world is trying to make us tolerate today by saying, eh, we have to be inclusive. Inclusive what? We have to be progressive. Look, if you don't want to be radical for Jesus, okay, shift. Allow those who are radical to be radical. Don't try to make them feel guilty or bad for their own choice, you know, because Jesus himself was not joking. He, he did not take it, he did not mix his words with Pharisees. If Jesus wanted to be inclusive and progressive and nice, he would not have been fighting with the Pharisees that actually going out of his way to provoke them. You know, because why would he go back into the temple to straighten somebody's hand? You think that Jesus did not know that man's hand was with that. He could wait for him out of the temple or he could not wait only on Sabbath day to do so and so or talk to them and answer them and what? Well, that's just the same people when he was 12 years, you see, he sat in the temple and was just listening to them, oh, probably just cooking their cookie and just saying, that, Papa, when you release me, I will deal with these people. But they could not tell at that age, they were instant marveling at it and say, Ah, what kind of young wise boy? See, yo, when he started, they're the very ones who end up, they were not able to tolerate it. They said, No, 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 no. This man cannot come and just deal with us like this and stuff. But today, no. Now they want to put Jesus aside. Then Jesus was too harsh. He, he used to whip in the temple. Let's not forget that. So yes, even the preachers today have to use a whip. Ah, gone are those days when they used to stand at the door and tell people who are not properly dressed for service to go back home. Come on now, you're going to church, you're not going to the nightclub. But today, no, no, no. 
No, no, no. Sometimes even on the PUP, the people who are preaching, oh, you don't want to look at them. You are bending your head say, help me, Holy Spirit, help me, Holy Spirit, help me, Holy Spirit. What's the Spirit that ministering to you? Those are some of the things that he talks about here. Yeah. No matter how briefly he talks about it, the intention is to awaken something in you, stir something in you. I mean, seriously, my pastor is no nonsense. These are some other books he wrote. The Last Hour and Familiarity. I'm going to study them again, you know, make proper notes and do a review of those words. It might not be for the faint of heart and it might not be for many people. Not many people are going to be excited to go get the book. You know, if it was how to become rich in seven days, how to attract a husband in 30 days, how to prophesy unto yourself, how to, how to, how to, how to, you know, kind of like personal development, motivational talking kind of thing. Now, if you have that kind of message, you will sell it like hot bread. But you have this kind of one who is going to contact you to buy this kind of book to study what they what about the gospel so you mean that all what people are preaching now is not gospel no it's very important even the apostle Pierre himself said that uh, there was a time when he was seeking the lord until at one point the lord told him that uh, i want you to buy a new bible forget about all what you knew just buy a new bible and take a marker highlight everywhere where jesus himself spoke study that part i want you now before you open your mouth and say this is the what scripture says that you yourself know that scripture says that and if you say jesus said that you yourself are sure that jesus said that because even you your own message has been watered down and so he has completely put it apart he said he fought it until he was like i cannot fight it anymore so this book is a wake-up call from the pulpit to the pew everybody oh yeah are you sure and you know you can listen to it the first time you could have you know when you gave your life to christ you were so excited you were staying up and now you were studying including me oh, i'm still there oh. blah, 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 blah. and then oh somewhere down the line oh. yeah but i know that one yeah and then you just get carried away in doing the things that you are doing for the kingdom yeah you don't know the kingdom anymore you don't know the gospel anymore and you don't want to know there's no time there's no time for fellowship there's no time to seek the faith. There's no time. There's no time. There's no time. I have to. No. Jesus himself, for example, he said it there. Mark chapter 1 verse 35. He got up early in the morning when places were still dark and went to a quiet place to pray. Jesus. So what is our own excuse? Ah, there's no time. There's no time. There's no time even to go to church. Well, that's those first um, disciples, you know, in Jerusalem. Every day they were gathering there, not for the whole day, but they were at least gathering every day. But no, we don't have that time for what? Uh, I have to leave now. I have to, I have to make ends meet. I have to, I have to, I have to. To each their own. Yet it is also important for us to put it out there, because we overcome by the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony. This book did a lot to me, and it still does a lot to me. In short, all the three books, especially this one, the Gospel Reminder and Familiarity. The last hour, it's just obvious for me. I didn't give myself life, so I'm not going to take myself away. And yet, the trumpet is going to sound. So I might not even die. The rapture might happen. It is there in the Bible. You know, some people say, ah, uh, yeah, but it is scary. So you want only the juicy part. You want only the precious promises part. You want only I am the more than a conqueror part. You want only no weapon passion against me shall prosper. You even forget the end. You know that's and uh, that's for servants of god though and inherit and, and inheritance so no 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 me too i'm a servant of god at that time everybody is a servant of god but when it's time to live a chaste life when it's time to consecrate yourself when it's time to fellowship when it's time to do bible study when that ah oh, that thing is too long one hour ah uh, praying what for one hour ah uh, not to talk of 10 hours hey what are you talking about hey you too show you're too spiritual <laughs> oh my god so anyway so um i put the contacts there right uh the facebook page and uh you can send an email and then the phone numbers are there um a church is situated in bonamusadi that's where i used to live before moving to bonaberry and that's where i used to attend church so after moving to bonaberry and dabbling dabbling and the lord saw how miserable i was and i will not let him be it's my papa Every day I'll cry, say, Papa, oh, Papa, you know, see how miserable I am, Papa, Papa. <laughs> oh, my God. 
And then in October last year, uh, sometimes around the end of October, yeah, it was exactly on the 26th of October. I remember that morning, or maybe on the Saturday, he told me, okay, this is going to be our last Sunday in that church. I was like, Papa, thank you. And I was just wondering, where is he going to send me now? And then in November, he said, okay, you can go back to Eden. I was like, whoa, oh my God. So since um, November last year, I'm back to Eden. So I leave Bonaberry and go to Bonamusadi. And when it's too much for me, I just go and spend the whole weekend there. No, no, no. Me, I know me what I'm after, you know. You know, it's good to know what you are after. And and, and so, you know, focus on that. Don't be bothered about what people are saying, what people are doing. People chase what they want. Some people is dollar. They will chase dollar, work seven days a week, 24 hours, seven days. I, I mean, like, they have maybe just two hours to doze off, drink the scape, blah, 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 go. Until the end, when you retire, you crash or use that same money and treat yourself. I don't know. But me, I put my hand on the plan. I'm looking back. That's why I read this kind of books. That's why I'm, I'm also writing, you know. I just, just keep my mind alert and all of that. Thank you so much, Pastor Valerie. Thank you so much for all the selfless work you do. I mean, discipleship school too, you know. Um, it's never too late to learn. And so I am very um, grateful. I'm humbled, you know. I'm so, oh my God, such a selfless pastor. The Lord knows how to order my steps. That's all I can say. And so I'm very grateful. You might be in Douala. You want to just visit. Who knows? Let me just tell you also. It's not It's not that rush, rush thing. Not fun. It's not just come make one, two hours or one and a half and go. No, no, no. You, you don't want that kind. Don't come. Let me not lie. Just so that people can come. Because himself is saying it. Though. He does not want to feel church. He wants to make disciples of Jesus. So I'm so grateful for this honor. Holy Spirit, thank you so much for your help. And uh, I know that this is what you wanted. Lord Jesus, I pray that many more people are going to eventually watch and are going to make that commitment to go back to the drawing board, take their Bibles, you know, get new ones and start all over again from the pulpit to the pew, as you said. Ah, Papa, take all the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, I have prayed. Amen. Thank you so much, my sister, for joining. Have a wonderful day. God bless us all.